Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this Logic Pro 10 video tutorial on working with system overload messages, as well as working with CPU uh, processing threads, as well as the freeze mode. The reason why I put all three of these topics in this video is because they all sort of relate to the system overload error message uh, that I'm sure everyone has seen by now. And what this really has to do with is it has to do with uh, logic sort of overloading uh, the processor. The CPU load is too much for your computer's processor to handle. This is a topic that has come up a lot uh, and a lot of people have asked me about, you know, I keep getting this system overload message. How do I deal with this? How do I work around this? Uh, a lot of people have gotten really frustrated with logic, but really when it comes down to it, you should, you should blame your computer's peripherals, you know. Uh, logic, after all, is a pro app. And if you don't have a computer with pro specs, you're really not going to get everything out of Logic that you could get out of it. Getting this message is also only exacerbated by having a session with a, a large track count, having on-screen plugins like my Kramer tape here where there's sort of a visual element as well as an audio element, having a lot of plugins in your mixer, and also just having a lot of, a lot of stuff going on, having a lot of automation, having a lot of virtual instruments. So all of these things sort of come into play when it comes to um, whether or not your system can handle the session you're trying to run. The first way to work around the system overload message is to optimize the number of cores or processing threads that logic can tap into. Uh, one way to start is to double click on your CPU meter and you can double check the number of cores and how much of each core is being used as well as the disk IO which is basically uh, how much of the disk uh, read and write is being used. So obviously a solid state drive is going to perform better than magnetic mechanical media. So if you have a 7200 RPM or 5400 RPM hard drive, um, you may be taxing that hard drive more than say a solid state drive. If you don't initially see this meter, one thing you can do is make sure that the custom view is shown in the LCD. And if, uh, if it's still not shown, you can right click and choose customize control bar and display, and then make sure to show the load meters under the LCD column here. And that'll show the CPU HD uh, meter. And again, you can double click on it to show it. So the meters are low because we're not really using uh, either of our two cores because the session isn't playing. But when the session's playing, we might be eating up a lot of CPU power. So to optimize that, you go to Preferences, Audio, and then from here, we're going to go down and look at our Processing Threads menu. Right now, the number of threads is two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to Automatic, and what this is going to do is it's going to sort of optimize... Uh, it's sort of going to give Logic the decision to, to decide, you know, what it thinks the best uh, number of cores to use for it is. And sometimes it's not always the best decision. In my case, this computer has a, this particular computer has a dual core processor, uh, but it's hyper-threaded. So that means that uh, it ha basically has two cores, but then two virtual cores. But when I choose automatic, it still only gives me two cores. So if I choose four and hit apply changes, it's gonna allow me to use the two uh, regular cores plus the two virtual cores for a total of four processing cores or four processing threads. So the workload's gonna be a bit more equally distributed across four cores now rather than just two cores. The only downside to this is now Logic is utilizing all four cores and if we have Safari open, maybe we're checking the internet or we have other apps open, those extra apps are not going to be able to uh, tap into the uh, extra available cores like we did before when Logic was only using two cores rather than four. So it's sort of a trade-off, you know, Logic's going to run better on four cores, but it means that you're going to have to sort of avoid opening other apps simultaneously because those apps are not going to be able to run as well uh, with Logic simultaneously eating up all four cores. Also keep in mind that all of these settings are going to be contingent upon your computer peripherals. The computer I normally use to do screen captures and to run my sessions on actually is a four core quad core processor and is hyper-threaded and actually is hyper-threaded for up to eight total cores. So basically four uh, actual cores and four virtual cores. 
So it's one of the reasons why I don't have a lot of the the processing issues that a lot of people ask me about is because I what I'll what I'll normally do is I'll set logic to be able to run six cores and then have two extra cores available for other apps uh, to run off of. So you know, logic will be utilizing six cores, basically four of the main cores and two of the virtual cores. And then, you know, if I decide to open up Safari and check my email or whatever, then those extra two cores are sort of used uh, to run Safari or whatever other app I want to run. So again, keep in mind that all of this is contingent upon your computer's specs. So let's say that you need another workaround for that system overload message. Maybe your dual core, maybe even your quad core processor just isn't cutting it for logic. One thing you can do is you can freeze your tracks. So you can right click on the track header, go down to track header components, and from there go to show freeze. So to freeze your tracks, you click on the little snowflake icon that shows up on all the tracks. Uh, you can actually click and swipe down to select multiple tracks. You can also click and swipe down to select or deselect a bunch of tracks. Just for this uh, example, I'm just gonna freeze the top two tracks. So you just click on those two icons and then you hit spacebar to start the playback of your session. Now, what Freeze does is it actually pre-renders uh, the tracks that you've chosen the freeze option on, and so it basically converts those tracks to audio files. So it sort of pre-renders the instrument and any effects that are on that track into an audio file. And the reason why it does that, and the reason why this is useful, is that it's, it takes a lot less CPU power to just play an audio file than it does to play a software instrument with a bunch of signal processing on it, with a bunch of plugins on it. So you could, if you wanted to, you could do this with your entire session or all of the tracks in your project, rather than just two. And if you do that, you should be able to play the whole session regardless of how many tracks are in it, even with say a dual core processor. One limitation is that you're not able to change the inserts or the instrument on the channel strip. However, you can still change the uh, bus amount or the send amounts, and you can also change the pan uh, as well as the volume control. Uh, all of the effects in the instrument are actually rendered into the audio file, so those things are frozen. The other thing you can't do is if you double click on a MIDI clip and try to change some of the MIDI data, it'll just prompt you to say, hey, the current track is frozen, so you're not gonna be able to alter that track. What you'd have to do is actually unfreeze that track and then go and try to uh, change the MIDI data on the track and then refreeze that track. So I hope this video has helped you out with the system overload message. And if you liked the video, please give me a like below and maybe subscribe to the channel as well. And I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.